Hello, it's me again. We're in module number three right now. This is about defining purpose. It's about understanding the macro trends of this consumer, taking them, translating to insights, and defining a clear purpose. As always, this is gonna be very repetitive. Three things to remember. Be attentive, curious, and stay optimistic. And let's talk about why we need this module. In today's society, consumers want to buy from brands that they care about the world. They, they want brands that their values are aligned to their actions. More and more, people are demanding transparency from brands. Transparency is very critical to be authentic. It's not about painting the perfect world. It's about being honest and how you convey your message. So at the end of this, my hope is that you will not only learn why you should stay true to who you are, but be equipped with the tools to help your company to, or yourself to define your core belief, your real values, and how you're gonna serve your audience. So let's just get into the three objectives. First, I want to educate and learn from the best brands from the world why having a clear core belief as your foundation for your product and or your service is extremely important. Objective number two is about crafting the belief, the obsession and the mission to serve your consumers. And number three is be inspired. Hopefully you're gonna be inspired to share and develop your very first individual assignment to better understand the expectations from the consumers and what your purpose should be. So let's just carry on on why this is important. Who you are conveys your authentic self. Let's just remember this, who you are as a person, as a leader, and as a company conveys your authentic self. And this is really important to ground every single thing you're gonna do, how you're gonna invest, where are the places you're gonna show up, how you're gonna talk, how you're gonna treat your network of people, your community. So let's just look at a few examples of very successful companies that have very clear purpose. The first one is Tesla, right? Tesla believes that the world needs to transition to sustainable energy. Let me repeat that for you. Tesla believes that the world needs to transition to sustainable energy. Do you see how they are very outward focused? It is not about them, it is about the world, which then positions them in a very strong way in having a clear role in the world for more sustainable energy. Airbnb, we believe that travel is better when you experience as an insider. What does it mean to experience travel as an insider? For Airbnb, it means when you travel in a host is there to not only provide you bed and breakfast, they're there to give you tips, guides, and actually allow you to experience that city as a local resident. At Adidas, they believe that through sport, they have the power to change the world. And I'm gonna unpack that a little bit more. Patagonia believes of love wild and beautiful space, demands participation to save them. So everything that Patagonia does, it's in service to reduce wastage in production of their clothing. A great example of Patagonia is that if you buy a jacket, you should never buy another jacket from Patagonia again because they'll service, they'll maintain, and they'll refurbish your jacket for free. So that's pretty crazy that instead of demanding more revenue from the consumer, they're just demanding loyalty so everybody can help save the world. Let's just look, what does it mean for Adidas? I had the privilege and the luck to experience this from the inside. So through sports, we have the power to change lives. That's their belief. Let's look at their obsession. Adidas, we are obsessed with helping athletes to make a difference in their game, in their life, and in the world. So everything that Adidas does, it's in service of helping athletes to make a difference in their game, in their life, in the world. Adidas' mission is to, the, to be the best sports brand in the world. 
The important piece here is the precision of not just being the best brand, it's to being the best sports brand in the world. And then their positioning, it's about being courageous, being confident, creative, and collaborative because they are the creator sports brand. Let's look at a 2010 World Cup or 2018 World Cup film from Adidas and I'll unpack that after watch to show how their belief that through sports they have the power to change the world, the obsession to make a difference in an athlete, in every athlete's their game, their life, and the world, and how they're the creator's sports brand. Let's look at this film for a second. Make some noise. So, as we watch this film, hopefully it was clear to you a few things. I'm just going to point them out to help you see the big picture. First, there was a very big intersection and crossover of sports. They brought in music, they brought in art, they have artists, they had hip-hop musicians collaborating with football players. Right there and there, they redefine and they reimagine what football is. They start playing with a little bit of most just like a volleyball net, then turn into a field and the field transform into a bigger stage. And even you saw Lionel Messi to say, you know, screw the script, let's just flip the script. So as a creator brand, where they're obsessed in making a difference in people's life, game, and world, that means that they have to imagine what it's possible and do the things they never thought possible. So that's what the creator sports brand in the world did. Now, we're gonna move into the next part of this, which is how do I get to real insights and take those insights to transform into product storytelling or a brand campaign. So let's take a quick look at why is this important, right? Previously, we covered the importance of having a clear belief, a clear obsession and clear mission. Now we're gonna talk about how do I take that to hone in, find insights, to tell powerful stories, to tell human stories. In this next section, you will learn how to really hone in insights, and I'm gonna show you real life applications of going from insights to storytelling and connect to the consumers. So I hope that at the end of this part, you'll be able to see what others couldn't see from an insight. And I will explain that in a little bit more. So three key points here. I want to show you real life examples of how to find insights. Two, understand the value that that insights can have and will create for your consumers. And third, I'm gonna give you the tools so you can implement a real insights program either for you, for your company, or for your or business. So let's go out and try to think a little bit different. Remember breaking conventions. In order to find real insights, you have to get out of the barn. You can't just sit in your office at your desk or in your house trying to find an insight. An insight comes from the intersection 
of data point, hard data, and observations. I like to say that a real good insight lives at the intersection of sociology, anthropology, and psychology. At the end of the day, consumers are what? They're just people like us. So get out of the barn. What I want to show you here is these two quick videos, right? That shows the difference between art and science, or however, how do you interpret this? On my left side, you see this person painting as it looks like it's painting. But when you actually open up and see this from a different angle, this is actually an algebra equation. On the right side, you see what it looks like an, a scientific experiment in, 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 in a real lab. But actually, this is an art installation and the modern art of museum. So it doesn't matter what the things are that you're looking at it, it matters how you're actually interpreting and looking and insights from a different perspective. This other video, it's one of my favorite. Let's watch for a little bit. So I'm going to do a bit of a narration here of this video. What I love about this video is that you see this person chopping an onion. And when you look at that, you're like, oh, that's painful. I personally, I'm not a very good cook. I don't like to cut onions. But if you're a chef, you look at this as actually probably like art or even science. The angle that he's cutting the onion probably has a, a reason why to cut the fibers and the onion in a certain space where it kind of releases different scent, or it depends on what kind of food you're cooking. So it all depends on how you're looking at it. You can see that this person that's cutting the onion, it's highly skillful. I mean, probably if I was cutting the onion at that space, at that speed, I would be chopping my fingers off, right? So this is just another example of that an insight is not just looking things the way they're just are as a face value, but it's actually just about being curious and trying to really uncover something that you have not yet seen. And it's very interesting because finding an observation is quite easy. Identifying an insight is very difficult. Here's an example. The image you have here, you see this young man kneeling on the side of a football field and you're going, what does it have to do with an insight? During my time at Nike in the World Cup in 2014, <clears throat> the most prominent insight that we found by talking to consumers is that consumers told us that they don't want more heroes. What they want us to do is to make them a hero. And that gave us a very rich insight to, to make sure that everything we did and we built around the World Cup campaign is to allow people and consumers to feel like they are national heroes. This kid here, let's just call him João. João was, actually this is a true story, I just don't remember his actual name. He was the first kid in Brazil who bought the Magista football boot, which was the boot that got debuted in the World Cup. Of course, we launched the boot before the World Cup, and then we took him as a, the first buyer in Brazil, and we told him we're gonna give him take him to Nike to give him his shoes because he was the first buy. But actually, we brought him to Corinthians Stadium, which was the stadium of the World Cup opener. And when he arrived there, he had 10 of his best friends. 
with the locker rooms fully kitted with their jerseys, with their names on the back, and they played a pickup game in the stadium where the World Cup opening game was going to happen. They were the first people to ever play in that World Cup stadium. Doesn't that feel like I'm treating him like a hero? Yes. Of course, during the process, we documented, we capture content, and then we spread that through social media and our digital platforms to show that we are listening to consumers and we're treating them like heroes. Let's just move on a little bit, you know? And here, I'm just gonna change here a little bit so I can have a better read because I like to give you guys a few definitions of what an insight is. I'm gonna read this one, so hang with me. An insight is an understanding about the consumer that can be leveraged to help solve a problem or a user needs. An insight is an understanding about the consumer that can be used and leveraged to solve a problem or a user needs. Here's another definition of insights, and this is actually a really cool one. It's just a simple capacity of understanding hidden truth. It is about peeling the layer and going one step deeper of actually what people are telling you versus what they're doing is to really understand what are the hidden truths about what people are telling you. The last one is my absolute favor. I'm gonna read this one so I do not miss. It's the task is not so much to see what no one yet has seen, but to think what nobody yet has thought about that which everybody sees. What does that mean? It means that an insight is not about finding something that nobody has seen. It's actually having the ability to look at what everybody has seen, but yet has not found the truth behind it. Let me explain a little bit. The great unlock of all of this is to understand the consumer and how that one thing that you found can be leveraged to solve that problem. And, and for us, as I described early, is that idea of treating the consumers in Brazil like real heroes. And to do this, you have to start with inform intuition. That's where you begin. What does inform intuition mean? Sounds kind of a bit of an esoteric definition, but it's where you take a data point and you cross over with qualitative observations of how the data point came about. That's informed intuition, right? And that it is can be found and you will be able to discover if you really know first and foremost, what are you trying to learn? And I'll give you a little bit more examples of this. And then once you define what you're trying to learn by building a hypothesis, you need to then take those informations, both quantitative data and qualitative data, to inform and influence either your creative process or your product creation process. Seems simple, but it's not, because it feels everybody was doing. That's why you're here. And I promise you, I'm gonna try to help you to show you how you do this. First, you need to define your audience. Who do you wanna connect with? Who do you want to build a relationship with? Once you have that clear, you need to approach with the right mindset. And the right mindset needs to come first. You have to lead with people. And the importance to lead with people is that if you start alone, you're going to finish alone. And to do this, you have to build a team. I personally like to build a team that it's very diverse. The reason why I believe in diversity is I've had the experience to live in eight different countries. And one of my favorite things is actually putting a problem in the center of the table and have about five to eight people from a completely different background trying to solve the same problem that we're trying to solve. And that is where creativity rise. That's where, you know, imagination and innovation rise. So you have to build a very diverse team. One of my favorite things that I love to do is to put a problem at the table. 
something we need to solve and bring five to eight people with very different perspectives. Because when you have multiple point of views trying to solve the same thing, that's where creativity arises. That's where innovation comes to the forefront. That's where imagination gets nurtured and, and propagated. So, uh, and the reason I like to do this is because when you have a very homogeneous team, let's say, trying to solve a problem, we can become a port witness of our own lives. And, and this means that whenever you ask a consumer, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Don't take their immediate answer as just simple face value. Here's an example. One time I was doing a consumer research in the city of New York. And then the agency spared us with one or two consumers or people we want to talk to. And then I was talking to this woman. Let's just, just say her name was Jennifer. And Jennifer was telling us she is an avid runner. She ran three to four times a week, and she was very conscious and careful with what she drank and what she ate because she took running very, very serious. And as we were talking to her, I started to kind of pick up that I wasn't sure if she really ran as much as she did. So I just simply asked, hey, can I take a quick look at your Instagram with you? She goes, sure. She picked up her phone, opened her Instagram account, and guess what? There's not a single picture of her running. She was out partying all the time. She was hungover and celebrating the three, four straight nights she was out. There's nothing wrong with that. But she was just an example of how consumers can be a port witness of their own life. Here's a data point. Let's just look at another data point. 93% of all drivers believe that they're better drivers than they actually are. In this research, um, it, people interview people to figure out how well they think they drive in the snow. And as you can see in this video, everybody thinks they're a great driver, but the cars are sliding everywhere, hitting other cars, and not really having any control. So the key point here is not whether people are good drivers or not. It's actually when you interview people doing the research, you have to think about and probe more and more and be curious to get to the real insight. So if you really want to find the real insight, this is one of my favorite pictures. If you want to know how a lion hunts, don't go to the zoo, go to the jungle. That's how we're going to learn and figure out through observation, through data points on how a lion really hunts. And the key to all of this is to make sure that you are honing in on the insights that it will allow your consumers to know what you want them to say, to feel, to do, and to think about your brand.